Hey everybody, welcome back. Building upon the last video, I want to add another piece to this fuel tower. So I've got 1113's fuel transfer pump on the bench. And right away, I'm noticing a few things that are a little bit different about this. This one has like a bronze drive gear on it. And what I'm used to seeing is like this parts unit here has a steel gear. So that's kind of a first for me. Uh, another thing I noticed about it, down on the bottom, do this all one-handed, like down on the bottom right down here, that is all one piece. It's all integrally cast into the main housing. And again, what I'm used to seeing is more like this other unit right here where that whole bottom part is uh, separate and it's just bolted on. There's a little pressure relief down in there. And I'm assuming that's what's behind this big plug right here is a different style pressure relief. But other than that, it's just a gear pump. Set of gears in there, pressure relief valve. We have a little furl here for the pressure output and the gear on it that drives it. So, oh, and one other thing I noticed, I can't make this one turn. <laughs> that might be bad, I don't know. So, we'll get into that, we'll take it apart, we'll see what's good, we'll see what's bad, and undoubtedly, see what's different. So I did some research in the parts book and learned that tractors 5J number one through 5J1676 used this style pump that has this integrally cast lower portion. So this is more of that first generation tech that 1113 has retained so much of. That makes it kind of cool. Um, it's got a little bit different relief valve in it than the other ones. I'm hoping all the stuff in here ends up being good because I don't have any more spares and I'd, I'd like to use this early style. Uh, other than just those few minor differences, layout, construction, disassembly, assembly is all going to be the same as uh, the later ones that I'm more used to. So step number one is to get this drive gear pulled off the shaft. I've got this little bearing splitter under it already, and I'm going to put this in the press. We'll get that right off of there. I like to pay attention to which way these were oriented, and luckily somebody's uh, already been buggering this, looks like, with uh, hammer and punch marks in there. So they were kind enough to label it this side up for me. There we go. And I'm just peeling the small key off of the shaft that locates the gear. And what's curious now is uh, this cone-shaped piece should already be trying to come off of here. It's um, underneath some, or it's got some pretty good spring tension on the back side of it. And maybe that's why the pump shaft doesn't turn because below this uh, cone-shaped piece, there's a packing seal out here and there's another packing seal a little bit further in. So maybe that's what's binding this shaft. I'm surprised that spring tension is usually, it's usually got a pretty good amount of pressure behind it. I'm surprised this isn't trying to uh, push its way off of here. So we'll have to see if we can loosen it up. Just uh, throwing some penetrating oil, not only down that cone shaped piece, but also into the, uh, the pump gear area. This thing is awfully dry. I took this uh, dead blow hammer and just kind of gently tap the end of the shaft. We do have that moving a little bit. We've initiated some movement on the pump shaft, but I don't want to uh, really start turning on things in case there's anything down there that might scar the body. So I'll just, uh, I'll just keep working this here. Here we go, a little bit of movement, the prying on it. There we are. That's that spring tension I was talking about. Okay, there's the one packing seal in there. It's kind of a cone-shaped thing. Here's a uh, washer of corresponding shape. A little bit rusty in there. Provides support for that seal. There's that spring. Looks pretty good, actually. At this point now, the paper gasket can come off. That cone-shaped piece uh, kind of sandwiches that on there. That other one's a little bit, uh, no, it's it's moving. That was a little bit stuck, but there's the other washer and there's the other packing seal down in there. Working on the front side now. I'm gonna take the pump body apart. We'll have a look at the plates and the gears. This is really gonna tell us the story. So, okay. Let's see how much of that cleans off. Oh yeah! Oh, oh look at that. Honestly, that's not looking bad. I was expecting pitting and everything else. That is one of the smoothest faceplates I've ever, ever found. 
Oh man, I'm liking that. Okay, don't get your hopes up though. I've I've got my hopes up too high before and and found them to be dashed. So body can come off next. There's two little locator dowels below. Yeah, we got a little bit of. Yeah, well, is that rust or will that wipe off too? Let's see. It's looking kind of dirty in there. No, actually. Actually, it's coming off fairly clean. I'm starting to like what I see here. Idler gear. Note the um, kind of the circular groove that's in the top of it there. The bottom side is, is flat. So for orientation, for reassembly. We're still a little bit stiff on that pump shaft. I'm sure it's just stuck in this other packing seal back here. We can see if we can work that out. There we go. Take a little bit of a look at this, uh, this body. This is the difficult piece to recondition if it's ever worn badly. You can see witness marks. I don't really feel much through the glove. Uh, once I get it cleaned up, I'll be able to tell a little bit better. Pump shaft. Yeah, it's, it could use some cleaning on those two uh, areas where the packing seals ride, but I guess I'm not really seeing anything that scares me yet. I've definitely seen a lot worse. So we're just about apart. I'm taking this little 90 degree fitting off. What that is, it's for what they call the telltale drain. So you have your, uh, your pump gears over here pressurizing the diesel fuel, and a certain amount's going to migrate back on those shaft bushings and come up against this packing seal back here. So when this packing seal wears out and starts to leak, uh, that diesel fuel is gonna find that little hole right there. That hole connects to this angle fitting, and there's a tube that connects to this and runs down the side of the engine. When that starts dripping, you know that your seals are starting to give out in the pump. So get that out of there. The only other thing is the pressure relief down on the bottom. And I, I loosened that off camera. It was, <laughs> it was more than hand tight. We'll just see what it looks like. Okay, a little bit of spring tension there. Copper washer for the plug. Okay, definitely a different style of spring than what I'm used to, a lot smaller. Seems like it's in all right shape though. Looks like we got a plunger in there. Yeah, there we go. See the seat down in there? Doesn't look horrible. Plunger's not horrible either. Well, those were the parts I was concerned about because I don't have any other than what's sitting right here. But all that's left in here is that piece of uh, is that packing seal that's stuck in. I can dig that out. And we got this this pipe plug here. Somebody's buggered it and rounded the edges. There's nothing beneath it. It's just a drain. So I'll probably have to file that back square and get that out of there. But uh, dig those last two pieces out and we're ready to start cleaning. So I've performed a thorough cleaning and inspection on all these pieces and I think I have a pretty darn good pump here. Um, this plate here, basically a little bit of a witness mark here, but it did not even erase the machining marks for this application. That thing's brand new yet. And we have a little bit of a wear pattern right here on this one. Passes the fingernail test. You can't even detect it. Um, I know that's not scientific. I put my depth, depth mic on there, and it's well less than five ten thousandths of an inch. So basically, again, for this application, that is nothing at all to worry about right there. Pump shaft, it cleaned up fairly well. I chucked it in the lathe and polished it. Little bit of minor pitting out here underneath that outer packing. That's not the critical one. The critical area is where the inner packing is. That's what seals the fuel and really not worn at all. Where those packings right either pretty darn good shaft happy with that um, internal clearances we have the pump body which is one inch thick right on the dot each one of the pump gears drive and idler are 0.998 so basically it gives you a two thousandths in clearance on the gears to the plates and a quick radial clearance when i dry assemble this pump uh, just checking the clearance between the gear teeth and the pump body cavities. I'm also running two thousandths right in there. They really don't give you any specs for this thing. There's nothing in the manuals. Um, basically, 
This is the tightest fuel transfer pump I've ever taken apart from a D2. I know the one that's in my 5U, the Iron Mistress, is at least twice as loose as this, and that thing pegs the needle just at cranking speed. It's got no problem outputting pressure all day long, so I'm not worried about this at all. Uh, another check I did was the pump shaft clearance to this bushing in here. I had a 0.493 bushing ID, 0.492 shaft OD, 1,000th clearance on that. Basically the same clearance I had in the bushing that's on the other end in that fuel tower. I'm calling this a good pump. Now remembering back to when I took this apart, I made note of these punch marks that had been imparted into this drive gear and I think I've put the pieces of the puzzle together enough to know how they got there. So the last person that put this pump together was obviously fighting the spring tension that is going to be exerted upon this outer seal retainer. Uh, we're going to have to worry about that now because this isn't all rusty and stuck together like it was when I took it apart. And if you look at the jaw tooth marks that are around the outer lower rim of this piece, I believe to overcome that spring and to compress it long enough to get that gear put on, the last person clamped this in a vise, just kind of barely hooked the bottom edge of that shoulder and cranked it down on the housing and kept everything all down and compressed long enough to take a hammer and a punch and drive that gear on the end of the shaft. So I got one more little elective project I want to do on this job. We're going to go back into the Selected Service Articles book. Now the last time I did one of these pumps, I had not yet purchased this book. And I'll tell you what, it's got this really handy looking article here about installing the transfer pump drive gear. Same setup that we're working on right now. So the job of installing the drive gear and woodruff key on the fuel transfer pumps is simple if you have this little tool devised by Union Tractor and Equipment Company, Alberta, Canada. With the tool installed as shown in figure one, right there. Tightening the wing nuts compresses the spring and holds the retainer in position while the gear and key are being installed. All necessary dimensions for making this handy tool are given in figure two. Now you can't put something like that in front of me and expect me not to do something about it, right? All right, built to specifications. Now we're ready. So first order of business is...